स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Madhvija I teaches history in the department of history Janki Devi Memorial College University of Delhi Today I'll be speaking on enlightenment When we discuss enlightenment basically there are two segments of this lecture one that is what is enlightenment and how do we understand it the another section which is very important in order to understand enlightenment in european context that is the relationship between the enlightenment philosophers and the ruling class of european society so for that second section i will be uh, taking the reference of three countries three rulers prussia russia and austria and then we'll try to understand the relationship between the enlightened philosophers and the ruling people of european society so let's begin with the definition of enlightenment or try to understand the meaning of enlightened movement in modern european society it was the scientific revolution that created condition for the emergence of the enlightened movement in europe the scientific revolution had greatly encouraged research for new studies this was not confined to abstract and philosophical studies but applied to human behavior as well the ideas of enlightenment borrowed from the philosophy of intellectuals like john locke thomas hobbes etc the enlightenment thinkers concluded that everything is determined by is everything is determined by the environment these scientific ideas were wound to undermine the traditional political ideas on which the authority of the absolute rulers was based for example the divine right of rulers there was a sudden outpouring of highly critical literature and ideas of governance this became the new philosophy of the enlightenment the empirical method was adopted for the secularization of political thoughts political activity was to be judged not by the supernatural of mystical order rather by observable facts of political life the political philosophy of enlightenment was concerned was constructed without reference to the divine revelance scientific spirit was used against superstitions inhumanity and irrationality of the existing governments most political thinkers of that period lived in france and were directly or indirectly influenced by the existing state of affairs while analyzing the inefficiency and autocratic nature of the state the philosophers were immediately confronted with the problem of privileges religious tolerance and the basis of royal authority the political philosophy the political philosophers focused on the exploited elements of these privileges 
as they were considered to be against the laws of nature. It was an attempt to replace arbitrary rules with rules based on vision, reason and the political and administrative structure of the ancient regime in France came under scathing attack. The enlightenment thinkers protested against the absolute powers of the church and the first time the national laws on the universe gave a powerful weapon to the followers of the enlightenment. The fight was not only against traditional church authority but also against the state, its censorship and operation. They fought for the freedom of expression and advocate political reforms by battling against entrenched authority. They believed that human behavior followed laws that could be discovered by reason and observation and that law could be applied to morality, government, economy and social order. In political theory, they believed that power is a trust from the community. Most thinkers regarded the social contract as the true basis of a state formation. They suggested that all artificial control over land use should be brought to an end to free productive capacity and allow independent flow of produce to the market. By artificial restrictions, they meant the feudal and seasonal system. The physiocrats, French philosophers, believed that the best government was that which interfered least. Another group constituted of scholars like and we called them encyclopedias, led by Diderot himself, he strongly believed in the spread of knowledge and for that purpose he labored day and night to prepare encyclopedia. That's why we called them encyclopedias. Based on classification of knowledge, he prepared these encyclopedias. There was another group called Republic of Letters emerged during 17th and 18th century. This was community of scholars and literary figures. The members of the Republic of Letters exchanged ideas and knowledge through letters, visits and correspondence across the national boundaries. The philosophers Immanuel Kant raised this question in his writing, what is enlightenment? Since then, it became an issue of debate amongst the thinkers. Arns Kasserer in his work, The Philosophy of the Enlightenment, has described it as a united and well-reflexive intellectual movement concerned with understanding the very process of thought. It enjoyed a unity that was based upon a preoccupation with reason, descriptive natural science, empiricism, tolerance and civil rights. Jürgen Hammermas, Michel Foucault, Robert Darrington has widened the scope of the enlightenment by including social practices and culture in it. Habermas see the encouragements of public Habermas see the emergence of a public space during the 18th century. By this term he means publication like novel, the press, 
and the process where the new ideas were read and discussed such as family homes, salon, coffee houses, societies and clubs. All such places that use reason in public. A political consciousness developed. A political consciousness developed in the public sphere of civil society, which in opposition to absolute sovereignty articulated the concept of and demand for general and abstract law based on public opinion on the as the only legitimate source. The basic premises of enlightenment are 1. It was proved by the scientist that natural rather than supernatural, supernatural forces govern the entire universe. Second, it was based on rigorous application of scientific method. Third, it was presumed that science could help the human race achieve infinite improvements. Habermas suggested that the rise of capitalist society introduced new features in this state structure and eliminated state-based authority. The public sphere emerged outside the feudal and royal courts which were free from royal control. Public in a narrow sense was regarded anonymous with the state. The emergence of this new democratized public sphere is called sphere of bourgeois sociability which was independent of the absolute state and provided a platform for public criticism. Peter Gay calls the philosophers a loose, informal, unorganized collision of cultural critiques, religious, skeptical and political reformers. But they all united on a vastly ambitious program of secularism, humanity, cosmopolitanism and the freedom of a moral man to make his own way in the world. Another approach to the enlightenment provided by the postmodernist writers. According to Michel Foucault in his work Madness and Civilization, the notion of reason under enlightenment instead of promoting liberation became an instrument of control which was silencing unreason. He sees it as a shift and a crucial shift to the development of an attitude of modernity. In the 19th century, writers of the Romantic movement highlighted the excessive rationalism of the Enlightenment that had led to exploitation and persecution. The feminist movement of 1970 presented critiques of gender bias of the male dominate, dominated writings which ignored the needs of women. The post-colonial writings are critical of enlightenment thought for its cultural specific approach and double standard adopted towards the European societies and the outside world. Enlightenment as a social movement is stressed on universal laws, liberty, freedom, citizenship, rule of law, etc. The thinkers of enlightenment movement promoted secular thinking. Most of them did not object religion or God, but rejected miracles. They promoted religious 
intolerance in the society and atheism also accepted to some extent in this new emerging society. They blamed Christianity for causing bloodshed and hysteria among the masses. Didro, in his many writings, attack on religion. He became an atheist. Most of his writings were not allowed to be published, such as supplements to the voice of Vogenvalia. The intention of the thinkers was not abolished religion, but to enlarge and liberate God from incorrect, be incorrect belief, create a more tolerant society. God was placed by the law of nature in their philosophy. This is the next section and this is about enlightenment thinkers of European world. The French intellectuals came to be known as the philosophers, a term used by their critiques to ridicule their presentation. But these intellectuals accepted this term with a sense of pride. In their efforts, they wanted to reform society through their writings and the new scientific interpretation of the universe. David Hume and Immanuel Kant, the real philosophers in the sense they wrote original. The philosophers talk about nature, mankind, society, government and the value of freedom. They challenged slavery and the divine right of rulers. The doctrine authority of the established church and sought to replace them by secular institutions. Franco's Mary Arout, popularly known as Voltaire, can be described as the personification of the Enlightenment. He was exiled to England for a, as a punishment for insulting a rich French nobleman. He became a great admirer of English philosopher and scientist Francis Bacon and John Locke. He had shown a great fascination for English social life and the respectful attitude of the Englishmen towards merchants, scientists and literary men. Apart from it, he also admired liberty of expression, freedom of press in England. He was also impressed by the existence of religious tolerance in English society. Through his writings, he was able to draw the attention of his contemporaries to the many ills of French society that included oppressive rule under royal absolutism, lack of religious tolerance and the abs absence of freedom. Voltaire, a French play writer, acquired a new identity and as a philosopher and criticizer of French society. He also lived in Switzerland, Prussia for many years. He has written an endless number of letters, play and novels and even history. He picked up themes which has a direct bearing on the lives of French people. He is well known for his strong criticism of traditional religion and his firm belief in religious tolerance. He was also a known spokesman for civil liberties. He suggested that all forms of fanaticism by Gautry and representation repressions should be eliminated. He emphasized monsters are those who prosecuted 
others. He was against all kind of arbitrary power. Voltaire exercised great influence in the spread of enlightenment ideas in his time. Another famous figure of that period was Charles de Scandent, known as Montesquieu. He came from a noble background and had diverse interests. He spent most of his life in study, travel and writing. He also had interest in science and conducted experiments on the effects of temperature change on animal tissues. His most famous work considered a masterpiece of enlightenment was his Persian letters. In this he created a dialogue between two persons from Prussia traveling in Western Europe and sending back their impression of what they saw and experienced. In reality, Montesquieu was making his attack on contemporary French institutions like Catholic Church and the monarchy. He also advocated religious tolerance. He denounced the institution of slavery, suggested the use of reason to liberate the human mind from its prejudices. He lived in England and travels so many other countries. His work, The Spirit of Law in 1748, in this he enunciated the concept of separation of power. He tried to apply the scientific method to social and political field in order to ascertain the natural law on which social relationship depended. He promoted theory of political sociology. He believed that there were three kinds of government, republics, despotism and monarchies. He considered the English monarchy is the best example of political rule and the English constitution immensely contributed to political thought based on the idea of checks and balance and separation of power of executive, legislature and judiciary. He believed that a balance between these is a state institution would prevent autocratic rule and operation and freely provided the great the greatest freedom montesquieu came to be known as a great political thinker but his views on the formation of government according to regional variations suggested that external conditions force human being to behave in different way and that the political system of a reason is influenced by its historical, traditional and environmental approach. Next in the line of philosopher is Denis Diderot. Radical in his ideas, attack immensely on religion which led him to solitary confinement. He attacked on all kind of operation and censorships. He was most versatile among all the philosophers of his time. He was the founder of modern psychology. He worked on blind and deaf. He has written several novels. Through his novel, he reflected the conflict between state and individuals. He argued Christianity is fanatical and unreasonable. He has written 28 volumes of encyclopedias in which discovery of science, art and trade are most important subject. 
he stated handicraft and technology could be compared with pure science physics and mathematics some portion of encyclopedia appeared non conformist for the state and the state stopped its publication it was seen against the harmony of the monarch creating tension and revolt in the french society outside from france the philosophers like john locke tried to link the scientific revolution with the enlightenment thought he believed the he believed that like astronomy philosophy could be subjected to the per progress of rigorous scientific method and critical inquiry he suggested that scientific method should be applied to the study of human society in an essay concerning human understanding in 19 in 1690 he rejected the notion of ability based on birth and instead recommended that the basis of secular laws of society should be law of nature Locke argued that every individual has a right to life, liberty and property. He argued that monarchy should be based on social contract between the ruler and the ruled. He advocated educational reforms, freedom of press, separation of political powers and religious tolerance. David Hume adopted the weapon of skepticism in his treatise of human nature he made an attempt to introduce the experimental method of reasoning into moral subject his approach to the ethics was utilitarian the greatest french political philosopher of the enlightenment was rousseau he was a self educated man and was introduced to the world of philosophy by diderot himself he was the most critical and original thinkers of the enlightenment his political belief made him a celebrated thinker among his contemporaries rousseau argued private property is the root cause of inequality responsible for crimes wars and even murder he declared that man was born free but everywhere he is in chains his political belief made him to argue that a government is a necessary evil in social contract he tried to establish balance between individual and institution of government he propagated general will the idea of general will as a collective decision of all the citizens rather than a majority decision amelie the most important work of rousseau and most famous work made him a major contributor of enlightenment In this work he emphasized on the importance of education to man. He believed that education should promote a child's natural mistake rather than restrict them. He argued that balance between heart and mind between reasons and sentiments important for the natural development of society. While Rousseau was a great thinker of human independence and freedom he had traditional views for women and their education system he supported subordination of women he argued education and vision is important for the political vision most of the thinkers of the enlightenment assigned women a lower status so it was not only the Rousseau and confined them to the domestic affairs 
directly and indirectly they promoted gender inequality Immanuel Kant the German philosopher the German philosopher opened the philosophers to mystery he and his followers came to be known as idealist he avoided taking extreme views on ethics like voltaire immanuel kant also instead insisted that men should use their learning fa learning faculties to enquire about nature as to improve their knowledge through reason he maintained that reason could neither prove nor disprove the existence of god but that practical reason inform us that in the idea of god the concept of moral perfection exist and all human beings must drive for it enlightenment was a movement primarily related to society it had its impact on political policies as well as on the structure of government it was believed that knowledge alone is not sufficient and that it had to be supplemented by observation experimentation and application the idea of enlightenment remained confined to the upper section of the society aristocracy and bourgeois living in big cities the social background of the philosophers varied greatly the ideas of enlightenment was propagated through the publications and sale sales of books the ideas of enlightenment was propagated through the publication and sales of books treatises and through patronage provided by a few rulers from central and eastern europe which we will discuss later on the emergence of the public literary sphere independent of a state authority showed that the judgment and literary practices were not controlled by the royal court or state institutions state helped in the creation of public literary sphere to emerge in the salon cafe houses libraries etc salon played important role in spread of enlightenment ideas among the literate elites of european society salon was pop popular in paris and london attracted the educated young and fashionable people salo in the cities organized by the educated women also women became mediators of changing culture some people of society complained of feminine influence on french political affair as some of the powerful women in these salo successfully influenced or recommend for their friends for official post cafe reading clubs and public libraries also played important role in making popular the enlightenment enlightenment views among the upper section of the society unlike salo academia plays important role formal role as educators and advisors to the rulers secret societies not only in france but other region of europe also played important role in bringing the free thinkers and the opponents of church together members took secret oaths followed rituals meetings were held for their proposed work women were also part of the secret societies 18th century europe experienced decline in religion novels and history became popular with the literate population 
reading circles and home libraries popularized private reading habits philosopher sought freedom for the artist and performers as well salon held art exhibitions critique helped in the shaping of public opinion about the art in european society development of rococo art also noticed in this period this new art form was utilized to decorate pamphlets and book covers music too was influenced by changing popular taste music now moved to the popular opera most of the promoters of the enlightenment ideas from elite background and created the test of the upper section of the society most of them were aristocrat government officials prosperous merchant lawyer and educated men high clergy etc masses remained masses remained under the influence of roman catholic church strict forms of censorship thus views of philosophers hardly reached to the masses mostly people who were illiterate in long term only ideas of enlightenment affected the common people ordinary people from humble social background had hardly anything to do with it relationship between enlightenment and enlightened despotism didro used the ter- term enlightened despots for those rulers who were prepared to reform the administration structure and formulate policies based on the chief ideas of enlightenment enlightenment spot is a term applied usually to some rulers who continued to develop absolutism rather fortified by the theories of the enlightenment they wanted to strengthen the power of the government in order to check anarchy tendencies at home and to provide security against foreign dangers Stephen J Lee described the relationship between the despots and the enlightenment as a marriage of convenience the relationship between the enlightenment and the despots varied from state to state many parts of europe underwent a transformation in the 18th century old alignments were breaking up and the rulers required a new social base they needed new source of income so they supported trade commerce development of industries etc they were intended to check and control powerful aristocracy but they never meant to promote democracy thus in the name of enlightenment some of them tried to provide new definitions to absolutism and they got a chance to regain their lost power central and eastern europe monarchies implemented some preachings of the philosophers into practice but they often acted on purely pragmatic grounds some monarchs adopted novelty but they were not new amos anderson points out that points out that there were nothing new about such policies and whatever novelty there was could hardly be ascribed to the influence of the enlightenment reforms suggested by the philosophers proved useful for the for these rulers for the king of prussia frederick the great catherine the great from russia maria theresa and joseph ii from austria hungary 
these rulers adopted some of the measures of the enlightenment ideology however lefevre rejected the whole concept of enlightenment despotism according to karl marx it was an attempt to keep alive by exploiting bourgeois doctrines and achievements the control that was earlier exercised by the feudal class here we can see in the slide the uh, most of the thinkers who talked about the relationship between the enlightenment despots and the philosophers lefevre karl marx fritharten so here about first we'll speak about the uh, fritharten now uh, fritharten described the enlightenment despotism as a form of benevolent kingship such rulers governed as servants rather than as master of the state the secularization of the state the disestablishment of the church a reduction in aristocracy and other special privileges a deep concern for the general welfare respect for the natural freedom and rights of the citizens a broadening interest in economy and improvement in the efficiency of government administration were popular character characteristics of enlightenment despotism the enlightened despots needed to increase their power as they required larger army most sophisticated weapons and a number of officials therefore they were compelled to search for the fresh source of income they have already squeezed much from the peasants and common people so they ended the tax exemption that had earlier been granted to the nobles and clergy they needed control over the church and its property these reforms wanted to realize these rulers wanted to realize the commercial and industrial potential of the country and they needed to destroy the privileged status of guilds to attract the skilled and wealthy immigrants to carry out the development of the state economy religious tolerance was very much necessary to implement these reforms the rulers required of professional bureaucracy paid by the state and dependent on the rulers to prepare these civil servants with sound knowledge a radical reconstruction of the education system based on practical application of knowledge was required and judicial reforms were also required thus it is possible to suggest that most of the policies which were commonly regarded as being characteristics of established despotism were based on reason dictated rather than inspired by the enlightenment it is also argued that a number of french writers like voltaire encyclopedias this and physiocrates found found themselves out of favor with the french administration and their writings were suppressed so they turned themselves to the rulers of prussia russia and austria they not only received great sympathy from these rulers but also adulation and admiration some of these rulers found the enlightenment ideas a useful source for justifying their new reforms and policy decisions now we'll talk about these three countries one by one let's speak about frederick ii of prussia first his time period was 1740 to 18 to 7 uh, 
his time period was 1740 to 86. Frederick II or Frederick the Great Persia was undoubtedly the most important figure among the enlightenment absolutes of Europe during second half of the 18th century. He was well educated and was well aware about his responsibilities as a king of Prussia. He devoted himself to serving the state of which he said he was the first servant. A sharp contrast to Louis XIV of France who is believed to have said I am the state. Frederick's greatest achievement was to make Prussia a great leading European power with few resources and limited population than those of other front taking powers in Europe. He almost doubled the area of his kingdom with acquisition of Silesia and West Prussia. His political philosophy was best expressed when he said, take what you can. You are never wrong unless you are obliged to give back. In politics, he was indeed an opportunist. It has to be borne in mind that to him, the national interest of Prussia was paramount. He utilized the time between his wars to improve the economic conditions of his state. He initiated various social and economic reforms to heal the wounds of wars. He improved agriculture by draining marshes, set up provincial banks and encouraged industries. He restructured the legal code by modifying the harshness of criminal law, promoted intellectual development of his people through opening schools. He was an absolute monarchy based on the strength of the army and it was indeed despotic. Because of his welfare policies and intention to provide great care to his subjects promoted his biographer Thomas Carrier to call him last of the kings. Now the second country Joseph II of Austria time period was 1765 to 90. Joseph II ascended the throne of Austria on the death of his mother Maria Theresa in 1780, though he was elected emperor in the place of his father, Francis of Lorraine in 1765. His model was Frederick the Great. Joseph, the most enlightened man of his times, was a very competent ruler as his ideas were much ahead of his times. They were not appreciated by his subjects. He sought to fuse together the various races of his empire into homogeneous whole. To achieve this, he undertook fresh administrative reforms and divided his dominions into 13 administrative units or provinces. The provinces were divided further into districts and towns. He made German the official language of his empire, practically abolished serfdom by allowing serf to marry, to sell their land and to pay a fixed rent instead of labor services. He established equality before the law by creating a uniform code of justice. Freedom of expression was encouraged and freedom of the press was ensured. He abolished the privileges of nobility, the clergy and the 
corporations. Founded schools encourage trade and industries and build a communication infrastructure to foster economic development in his country. Joseph II brought the church under the state and organized it on national basis. He promoted religious tolerance in the society. To sum up, Joseph's main objectives was to unite his dominion under his absolute rule by abolishing all differences of race, language and religion. However, the reform were harshly undertaken without considering the fact that they might hit the tradition, prejudices and age-old customs of Austrian people. In foreign policy, his goal was to establish Habsburg supremacy in Germany. He sided with Prussia temporarily to prevent Russia from observing the whole of that country that he added a large tract of Polish territory to his dominions. He also formed an alliance with Russia to occupy the Balkan while he captured Belgrade from the Ottoman Turks. But his plans frustrated by Frederick the Great who formed a league of German princes known as Frusten Bond. Joseph II had to call off his aggressive policy towards the Turks due to the hostile attitude of Prussia. Joseph II was an, an unpractical idealist even though he was inspired by the spirit of enlightenment and his outlook was liberal. His dominions were inhabited by a multicultural population and the unification of different races and elements was one of his chief objectives. However, his attempts to impose uniformity were very hasty with the result that he came to be looked upon as an in interfering tyrant. His foreign policy too ended in a failure. Last but not the least, Catherine II of Russia. In the 18th century, Russia followed an expansionist policy under Peter the Great. He died in 1725 and Russia was left in deep crisis. Catherine II, the Queen of Peter the Great, eventually rescued Russia from this crisis. Catherine was well educated, a prolific writer of historical arts, articles and dramas and a great admirer of philosophers like Voltaire and Diderot. Catherine followed the footsteps of Peter the Great as far as domestic policy was concerned. She has orientation for westernization of Russia. This policy found manifestation in her patronage of Western education, foundation of schools and her initiative to develop industry and commerce. Catherine offered patronage to higher education and extended assistance to Diderot, the co-editor of Encyclopedia. For well there, one of the best enlightened rulers was Catherine second of Russia. But her administration was far from autocratic than liberal. For example, serfdom continued in Russia and social and economic condition of serfs deteriorated further during her region. In order to mobilize popular support, she discussed reforms but did not actually undertake reforms. She tightened up her administrative control by dividing Russia into 44 civil governments and districts. Each of these units controlled by the central government 
and officials appoint, appointed by the central authority. Clergy were brought under control of crown and church property was secularized. The principal achievements of Catherine II can be traced in the realm of foreign affairs. She labored hard to implement Peter's ideas of expansion to the West into practice. Three European powers, Sweden, Poland and Turkey were located on Russia's way towards the West. Sweden had already been occupied by Peter the Great. She concentrated the other two. She succeeded in destroying Poland but she could not dismember Turkish entirely. Because of this particular cause, she formed an alliance with Joseph II of Austria, who had e equal interest in Turkey as we discussed earlier. The gradual decline of Turkey gave rise to what is known as Eastern Question. Catherine was one of the leading Enlightenment despots of 18th century Europe. Her importance in 18th century European history rests in the fact that she transformed Russia into a major player and European politics and contributed significantly to Russian territorial expansion. She summed up her own achievements regarding foreign policy in the following words. I came to Russia as a poor girl. Russia has dowed me richly, but I have paid her back with a job, the Crimea and the Ukraine. Now we will discuss some of the limitations of enlightened absolutism. Apart from all these welfare policies of enlightened despots, kings, they could not bring about lasting solutions. In the long run, enlightened absolutism proved to be a failure. It failed due to its inherent limitations. They acknowledged that rulers existed for the good of the people, but they denied that they should be directed by the people. The success of such a system depended solely upon a single person. When weaker rulers succeeded the efficient rulers, the whole machinery was thrown out of gear. Enlightened despotism was an enlightened reaction to the evils of the old regime in Europe, but this reaction was too feeble to turn the tradition of monarchical absolutism upside down. Not all reformers among the European rulers could be enlightened despots because the basic, require, the basic requirement for the purpose of identification of enlightened despotism was the connection between the kings and philosophers. The legal reforms, particularly the codification of law carried out in name of the enlightenment and to a certain extent reflected the aspiration of the philosophers. However, it is difficult to establish any direct link between the enlightenment and the practical policies of the monarch. The chief among the enlightened despots were Frederick the Great of Prussia, Catherine II of Russia as we have seen, Maria Theresa to some extent and then her son Joseph II of Austria-Hungary. The most enlightened rulers were often least successful as we have seen in the case of Joseph II of Austria. Thank you.